Hello and welcome to our video on Google Classroom for students. My name is Corinne Kelly and I'm one of the instructors at SOIDA State Ed Tech in Ohio. And today we're going to be talking about um, how you can use Google Classroom from a student perspective and how to access and turn in your assignments. The only website you're going to need today is Google Classroom. That's classroom.google.com. And if you haven't been there before, we'll get there in just a second. If you are a teacher that is watching this so that you have a better idea of uh, what the students are going to see when they're doing the assignments that you sign in the classroom and you're wanting to get a certificate of participation, you want to go to ohioedtext.org to access the website and then you're going to need this code when you fill out the form requesting a certificate. It's GCST and that needs to be in all uppercase letters. Okay, all right get out of here and we're going to head over to Google Classroom. Um, so to get to Classroom, you can type in classroom.google.com or you can use your app launcher here and a lot of you will have Classroom right in there. So I went ahead and assigned some things as a teacher in this class. Now if you haven't joined your class yet, you're going to need to click the plus sign, join class, and type in the class code that your teacher provides to you. Okay. All right, um, but I'm already in this class, so cancel. I'm going to come in here. So when you come in to Google Classroom as a student, you'll see your classes. You'll see your teacher's pictures if they've added them. And anytime you've got an upcoming assignment that's got a due date attached to it, it's going to be right here. So I've got two that are due pretty soon. Um, so I can actually click on those right from here and go straight to the assignment. You don't have to go back through and find that assignment, which is really helpful. This is the quickest way to get to your stuff. Some other things that are useful. Um, this little guy here, the little person on the clipboard, is your work. So that is all of your stuff that you need to do, all of your assignments that you need to do and turn in. So you can also access your work right here. You can see this poor student's not doing so hot in this class, um, but you can see all of your work that you haven't turned in by saying, I need to see all my missing work, and you can see what's assigned to you and the due dates really easily. And it's again just for this class, so you would need to go into that for each class um, or go right here to your to-do list, which was over in the sidebar. That's how you can navigate between your classes really easily. And then you can see all your missing work for your classes. Hopefully you guys don't have as much missing work as this kid does. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go back into my seventh grade social studies class, open it up. Um, okay. So another thing that's really useful, we saw on that home page where we could see upcoming assignments and their due dates. Another thing that's really useful is the calendar. So there's two ways you can do this. This little guy in the top left hand corner, you can click on him and go to calendar and you'll see all of your assignments for the week that are due. And then you can go forward and back and see what your upcoming due dates are. You can filter by class or you can use the calendar, the full app on your phone or the site on here. If I go to calendar, every time you join a class, you get access to that calendar. Okay, so if I came in here and said, there we go. There's some of my assignments right there. Okay, so either way, um, but just know that that assignment calendar is being kept for you and that you'll have the ability to use that and it can be really helpful for you as well. All right, let me go into that class. Okay, so when you come in here, this is your stream. Depending on the settings for your teacher that your teacher selects for this class, you may or may not see assignments in here. Some teachers just have all their announcements in the stream, and some put assignments in here as well. So in this class, assignments are here, and I'm also seeing those upcoming assignments right here as well. Okay, then you've got your classwork. So I'm going to click up here on classwork, or I can see. Um, my content as well. Now your teacher may be using topics. So if they've told you, hey, there's an assignment in homework, you can click over here in homework and access your content that way. 
um, you'll just have to kind of get a feel for how your teacher is organizing that and they should be communicating that to you where things are. So if this, if they're all going to be in the stream, you can get them in the stream. If they are going to be categorizing things and using topics, they should probably be letting you know, hey, I've posted something new in topics. Okay, and classwork or homework or go here to access this. All right, so let's talk about um, turning some things in. Okay, so we've got a couple different assignments. I'm going to go into the stream here. Um, so sometimes there's assignments where the teacher has already made a copy for you and you have your own individual copy and you're just going to go in and, and do it. Okay, so in this case, for this assignment, I've already made that, or the teacher has already made that for the student. So you can click on it to open it up and then your work will be here. Always look at what is attached to the assignment and read the directions. Sometimes there might be a lot of directions. Sometimes there might be a little direction, but always look over here because your teacher has the ability to attach multiple items to an assignment. Okay, so they might have in here a doc where you have to answer questions and a drawing where you have to do some sorting and there might even be a video that they want you to watch. So make sure that you um, go into that assignment and really make sure that you do everything that's in there. So in this case, this is just a drawing. Um, we're going to drag and drop. Didn't grab that one very well, did I? There we go. Complete my assignment. Um, so in all of the tools except for Docs, you're going to have to then go back into Classroom to turn this in. So see how this opened a new tab? I'm going to go to the previous tab and say, yep, I did that. I'm going to turn it in. And you can send your teacher a comment or something if you feel like you need to, if you have a question or you were confused by something, and you can turn it in. Now, if you turn it in and you realize, oh, I forgot to do something or I made a mistake, you can unsubmit that, okay? If you turn it in on time and for some reason decide to unsubmit after the due date and resubmit, even though you had originally turned it in on time, it's going to mark it as late. So your teacher does see when things are marked as late and it comes in to Google Classroom as being late. So if there's a late penalty, you want to be aware of that. So make sure that you got everything in order before you submit it. You don't have to submit it right away. You just have to submit it before the due date, right? Okay, so that was an assignment where the teacher had made a copy for each student. Sometimes there's going to be assignments where they don't do anything. Notice there's nothing attached here, okay? Um, there's a couple things going on in this assignment. So it says right here, the teacher has typed this, create a doc from this assignment and type your report. Please be sure to utilize the rubric for this assignment and run an originality report. And you guys may not have seen these before because these are newer features, okay? So the rubric allows teachers to put a rubric in here. And there's really nothing in here because this was just a demo, but you might see multiple categories with explanations of what those point values mean. Okay, and then originality reports is a tool that lets you run it to make sure that the vast majority of your um, work is your work and not something that's plagiarized or um, poorly rephrased. Uh, so that you are not committing plagiarism. So it's a good thing. Um, so you want to run those and you can run originality reports up to three times on your document when that's turned on and you'll see right here, originality reports available. Okay. All right. So since I don't have anything attached in this case, I'm going to click add or create, and then I can go to create a new doc. Now, let's say you'd already gone into Google Drive and made something. You, you know, kind of skipped that step of creating it in the assignment. Instead of at, um, creating a new, you would go to Google Drive and you would add it from your drive. But you want to make sure you attach it. Um, your teacher, I'm almost positive, does not want you to go into Google Drive and then share it with them where they get an email and they have to go find it in their drive and then they have to come in here and maybe attach it to your assignment. You want to create or add your document via Google Classroom, okay? 
All right, so let's see if it's going to type for me. Here. Make sure it's all set up the way your teacher wants you to set it up. Okay, and then um, you will be able to come in here. Don't do that. <laughs> all right, and um, and type your document. And I'll notice there's a turn in button up here. Okay, so let me over here and so as soon as you have that document started you'll be at the ability to run an originality report so let me just show you what happens here let's say that I want to just come in and I'm thinking no let's see Maybe that's not the best one. Let's find a good one to copy off. <laughs> Don't do this, you guys. You teachers are watching. There's all kinds of tools they can use. I've pasted this in here. All right. When your teacher's going to look at this and know for sure that you didn't <laughs> type this yourself. But let's just say I want to turn it in. You just click turn in. Um, there we go. Turn it in. And then once I've turned it in, I can't access it. Okay. Now, if you need to access it again, just unsubmit. Yep. You have to run those originality reports before you turn it in. So let me click run. Run. It takes just a minute. Let's see if here it's running it. It's almost done. Okay, and now I can view it. And what it's going to do, it's going to say, um, you've got two flagged passages, no cited or quoted passages. And it's showing actually two websites realize it's 95 percent copied you guys see how that works so you definitely don't want to be doing that you want to be typing your own work um, but if your teachers turned originality reports on for an assignment make sure you use that because sometimes we even find that even if you're trying to do a really good job paraphrasing you are citing and quoting there's still some times where we're really typing something that's way too close to what was originally there. Okay, so I've got that done. Hope I would go in and fix it and I would turn it in and then my teacher's gonna get it. Um, and always look at your, again, your rubric as well. So that's, you know, pretty much all you have to do. Um, if your teacher assigns a form, let's see if I can find a form. I think this one's already, and in here this is always really nice um, okay so here we go I hit submit and view my score because this is a quiz your teacher may have set it up as a quiz and that's up to them if you get to view your score right away or not. In this case, we did. Apparently, I got one wrong. No, oh, there was a quiz question that I didn't see there. Um, that's just error on the, the form. Um, but I did not, in this case, have to go back into Classroom and turn it in. So for everything except for forms, you'll have to go into Classroom and make sure you actually physically turn it in, unless you were in a dock and click that turn in button. But with forms, as soon as you submit the form, it's turned in, okay? Um, all right. You can always email 
your teacher and contact them right from within here if you have any questions and don't forget you have that really nice to do list to keep up with your work okay all right that is all i have for you if you have questions for me again remember you can email me my email is just karen c-a-r-y-n at soida.org please feel free to email me any google classroom questions you might have thanks so much for joining us and see you in the next video